Um, okay, you're getting assertion errors. I have no idea what you're seeing, so I'm trying to debug this. But, um, I mean, one thing I noted is that in the changes you made, um, let me just pull up the change or the pull request. Uh, I'll tell you what I do know here. Oops, this is not it. Um, let's go over here. What I do know... Let's see, where did this go? Oh, come on, it was here earlier. Nothing's ever simple. Um, oh, I have to log in to get this, but um, yeah, basically the deal I observed, yeah, here we are, here's this comment, the Travis continuing, continuous integration build failed here. So what I'm seeing is that um, what was checked in also failed to compile um, under GCC, CLang, under any of these, it completely failed to build. In contrast to, say, the project itself, um, which evidently, and I'm trying to remember where this was evidenced, um, I think in my closed pull request, yeah, I see that this compiled successfully. Um, so the last, wait, wait changes, okay, that's how I remember. Somebody else tried to do a pull request and what they tried to pull successfully built. Not that I accepted this change, because I didn't, but for other reasons. But I see that this failed to build. So this is just what I know is that um, some pull requests are causing or related to uh, build problems. Um, like if you could provide some more context as to what errors you're seeing that might help me address your issue. One thing I did observe that um, like in addition to these things that were mentioned here, I was glancing through the, the actual commit, like what got changed here. Um, and I saw that you changed all the calls to string functions. Uh, let me scroll till I find this here. Yeah, like maybe your compiler doesn't, is ge generating warnings or errors based on these string functions. Um, uh, and while I'm with you that um, changing what string functions we're using would help um, in a very idealistic sense and that it prevents possible problems from occurring um, I'm only going to accept this kind of change where we change these things if it means that future changes made by the other developers aren't going to conflict with this. So basically this is something that needs to be proposed to happen upstream and then I can accept this kind of thing if it if upstream they accept it and I doubt they will but they might. Um, but I think it's more expensive code to be run and it's uh, they have such an elaborate test and continuous integration server built up that they're reticent to make the code any more complex than they need to be because they have strong ways to test it to ensure that these boundary conditions really don't pose a problem. Um, yeah, but I think those are just warnings, not errors. I'm still struggling with what kind of errors you're encountering. That's kind of where I'm confused. 
works. It's probably not that. It's got to be something else, but what? Um, it could be that maybe we are using a different set of header files or something, and um, there's some incompatibility there somehow. Um, oh, let's see. I mean, yeah, I very much like the idea, and I, I want to accept the bulk of what was here. Just because um, it would be hard to disprove that this is a beneficial thing. Uh, and it's definitely easy to prove um, just looking at games like this one here and evaluations like that of this move and seeing that some of this just doesn't add up at all. Um, it's definitely easy to prove that there's a problem. Um, and there's ways, obvious ways, to test um, either running the engine versus engine, doing a regression test, or there's, there are ways to test that this improves the engine. Um, I'm just concerned that uh, possibly future Stockfish changes might cause this one to break. And so that's why I need to carefully step through like each of the individual things we changed or you changed here and ensure that these are actually the way we ultimately want to do this um, yeah I, um, where was that one thing about there's something about a rook here that really confused me and now I'm getting distracted. Um, yeah, so I see that there's a bonus for H rook on open file, but if the A rook happens to get on the open file, should that get a bonus too? Like, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me go reread your comment that you added down here. Um, okay. Separate list of piece values were defined. Um, so piece values are... Okay, so along with piece values, exchange values were added for rook and minor pieces. Um, Uh, yeah, some square values were added too. So cer certainly these are going to cause the evaluation to change. And based on evaluations that can help direct the search in some way. Um, yeah, I think... Oh, I'm sorry, this wasn't your most recent comment. Your most recent comment was... It's over here. Continuing where we left off, you're able to touch on most of the evaluation changes that are made. It'll have specific pruning or exemption in search CPP. Uh, I think that uh, just looking through, trying to read the code diff, it looks like these changes that were made to the search um, were made to only affect the Horde AI. Um, meaning that other variations and normal chests would remain functional as is and not affected by this change but for a horde AI searching that's something different than a normal chest search assertion errors oh not compile errors in assertion errors in the pictures um okay See, there's pictures here somewhere. Um, well, specific pruning, all this was made to... Uh, or, yeah, you're saying a sort of specific pruning or exemption that could take advantage of this variant would be interesting. 
Before merging, there were only a few things uh, you came to conclusions about. You feel it's appropriate. Uh, feel it. Uh, feel that it can play black to a level beyond all people on the site, which is pretty. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty bold statement. As for playing white, there are still a couple things we need to tweak it to play better. Um, focuses too much uh, in securing the already invaded side instead of taking some tempo against um, black's misplaced pieces and pushing the opposite flank. Like one thing that I observed was that really in horde chess a really important thing is building up an enormous pawn chain that as you were saying that is able to control space and that opposing pieces aren't able to permeate the pawn barrier uh, which is a really really difficult problem to statically test inside of an evaluation function especially given that variations and sacrifices and things can break that uh, barrier. Yes, the AI has to some way, either in its search algorithm or in its positional evaluation, needs to account for the fact that this barrier exists, um, but I'm not sure, um, and this is why I need to do some really extensive testing or careful thought about this uh, yeah clearly what was done is an improvement um, but it's possible that if I accept this and then later accept official stockfish changes that might um, might really skew the evaluation and or the search um, so I just need to be really cognizant of what specifically is changing and does that appear to be generic enough that going forward other optimizations and evaluation improvements won't heavily skew the way that this is intended to work? And that's a really difficult problem to solve. Um, yeah, just cause, yeah, like a lot of these things, uh, I think this used to be, for opposite color bishops, this used to be part of the endgame evaluation. I see that as of recent changes, I think as a pull request 21 to my project, just up merging upstream changes, um, this got promoted into a more generic place, and that's why my code doesn't exclude this, I guess. Um, Yeah, no, and it was in reconciling pull request 21 that we're saying, yeah, just don't do this evaluate scale factor for opposite color bishops because end games in most positions in general differ heavily um, from what's done for a normal evaluation and search. There's some things that uh, we just want to completely skip over this part because opposite color bishops and things really only make sense for normal chess. Um, okay. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, you you just focused on trying to do this and evaluate .cpp, doing these, doing all these changes via static evaluation. Um, after solving that, another slightly more dubious error occurs. Okay, assertion failed. Values greater than negative infinity. Uh, line 1455. Oh. 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 How could this be? Um. This is really confusing. Ew, I goofed. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this this is wrong, I think. Or at least I can debug this and take a look. Um, one thing I did 
change while merging pull request 21, just bringing in upstream changes, is that this counts, uh, and this is really determining what phase of the game are we in. Are we in the opening, middle game, or end game? And the way in which it does that is normally this would count the number of white pieces and the number of black pieces and so forth, um, but here, because all white has are just pawns, it, the game phase is really dependent on does black have a whole bunch of minor pieces or is black down to just pawns and such. So that's what this is about, is that, that this line here is correct, but I'm not so sure about the line that follows at this part, which is probably what's sending us beyond... Um, assertion failed, value is greater than negative infinity. Um, yeah, if I could know, like, what was our position that caused that, I guess I could... Uh, generate a position. Let's see, here's like f5 of 6, g8 f6. Uh, there's, I mean, there's got to be some way that I can replicate this. Yeah, I should redo the analysis or evaluation for each position but with some of these safeguards or assertions enabled and see if I can duplicate that. That's what I should do. Because that should be easier to duplicate, I assume. Oh, just position, start position, go depth 30. Okay. Um, yeah, let me do that with all the assertions enabled. Um, See, we have to do that over here, just because this desktop over here is already kind of noisy, um, just in terms of having so many things up there. So let me um, change directory into the Stockfish directory. Um, and I assume that this was for a horde chess position. Yeah. Yeah, disabling assertions is doable. Um, so... Like, if you look at the make file that's provided with the Stockfish project, um, the file that's just called make file, capital M make, um, that has no extension, you'll see that... Uh, and there's a, yeah, at line 238, uh, that this make file automatically disables assertions. Um, let me see, what's the condition here? And what's the default? I think the default should be that assertions are enabled. That's <laughs> apparently not the default. Okay, that's weird. Um, so I'm going to do make debug space equals yes. Yeah, no, I, I get that, um, and uh, I'm trying to figure out how do I make a more portable make file, something that'll work inside a Microsoft environment, even though I myself setting up a Microsoft environment would probably challenge my ability to check in things or test them out properly. Um, so, but... I think the argument you're interested in is just, uh, again, just look at that make file. I think it's line 238. There's a preprocessor directive. Um, you need to somehow uh, add that parameter, I guess. 
that ND bug uh, argument or preprocessor directive has to be set in some way or shape or form within. Um, I presume you're using Visual Studio. Um, but yeah, I will enable assertions and I should be able to see this if I do the same thing you were doing. And I assume that this was done for uh, an ata or a horde start position. Um, so let me try that out right here and now. Stockfish. Uh, set option, name UCI underscore horde, value true, position start, POS, go depth 30. Okay. Um, it's not what I expected at all. Yeah, I got some different assertion. Let me try that same test again. I got something to the effect that I'm accessing an incorrect array index. Alright, yes, I'm able to duplicate that, but I'm not seeing the same assertion you're seeing because I have some other problem first. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, basically I just need to know what's the use case, and now I can, I see this, uh, uh, how do I describe this here? I mean, yeah, obviously it's an assertion, it's a position.h line 310, uh, basically saying that one of my array indexes is incorrect, or out of bounds, or, um, I guess that I'm trying to specify a piece type of three and a color of I don't know what uh, and that line of code's failing. So yeah, I'll definitely make sure that um, I run this program with assertions enabled and that um, I'm able to get through these sorts of things and I'll commit my changes to fix these sorts of things. There probably should be pretty minor fixes to get all that working. I just have to find out um, what the problems are and fix them specifically. But, yeah, sorry about the trouble I've caused there. Um, I, I suspect that, I mean, I know this was all working with assertions enabled um, prior to, where did I do this? This thing here. Where I merged 43 commits from the official Stockfish project into my own, or the official repository into my own repository. Um, this affected, this added 901 lines of code and removed 1,208 lines of code. And I spent hours being careful doing this and even despite best intentions and being very meticulous about how I perform the code changes um, obviously I fail to account for the use cases that you're seeing so I need to um, fix this particular commit or this thread of activity here um, such that we're able to not encounter all these insertions while you're testing and so we can do some good testing uh, a regression test between the two versions um, I mean yeah had I known that you were working on some of this I, or had I known that you were seeing any of these assertion issues I would have 
stepped up a lot earlier and addressed them so you wouldn't have to struggle so badly with it. Um, I was kind of surprised to hear that this has this got along so far. But, I mean, it's a good thing that progress has been made. Yeah, you yeah, know, I, I am using GCC and, like, the whole GNU tool suite. Um, so my build command is just uh, make. That's the build command I'm running from the command line. It's make. And then um, this particular make file requires me to specify my architecture that I'm building on. Um, and so let me get you know, my notes about uh, how I do this. Yeah, so... I'm sorry, it's not just make. It's make space all. Um, so, yeah, I'll type it out here. And this, due to the magic of make files, issues all the appropriate compile and link and so forth commands that are appropriate in a POSIX environment or a Linux environment. Not POSIX, it's a Unix based system. Um, so, oh, but yeah, what I've been trying to do here is uh, connect to the Mongo database and remove this particular game from the collection so I can reanalyze it. Um, Analysis two. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does Mongo work again? Find document. db.collection.find That's exactly what I issued here into the command line. I said db.analysis2.find and did not get any feedback. Okay, so what am I doing wrong? Do I need to specify query? I guess I do. Confused. So confused. Um, how is it that... Hmm. This would help if I didn't lose my shell scripts. I still have to find them and recover them. Um, though I thought I had multiple backups of my backups, and apparently I'm missing something here. Oh, maybe I found it. Yeah, here we are. db.analysis.remove Okay, so apparently 19 games have been analyzed, including this one. And now I just purged all 19 of those analyses so I can rerun them. Or at least rerun this one. So I figured that out. That was tricky. Um...
Yeah, so... I guess your version of make doesn't allow you to specify arguments or something weird like that. It's just make target. Um, instead of make all, it's I guess just make target. Um, I think all is a... Uh, what's the word? It's a pseudo something or other that is translated into knowing what other things have to be made. But yeah, make target should probably work just fine. As long as you have you're setting in the appropriate uh like obviously when you're building you're somehow sending a preprocessor directives that yes, hoard is enabled and all these other preprocessor things that are needed to enable certain sections of the code are in place somewhere. Um if you really want to disable assertions, and I'm not sure that you do, but if you do, then you need to provide the ndebug um, preprocessor directive as well. And that, again, just comes from the GNU make file. Forever ago, I added that directive to the make file because it was... Um, it was doing debug related things in a non standard non gnu way and i wanted to leverage um uh, gnu auto make and auto configure capability such that if the configure script said that we're going to disable assertions and debugging that that actually does happen um yeah, disabling the assertions is just going to mean that later problems are going to occur. Which is kind of why I'm saying I need to get this code to a point where those issues that you're seeing don't happen anymore. Um, one thing worth noting, so now that I switched from a two Stockfish instance to a one Stockfish instance analysis, um, we don't see any sharp dips in the graph that go below zero here. So Stockfish is convinced that uh, these positions aren't, in fact, uh, favorable for uh, for black. Let's see, where was the one we were looking at earlier? Yeah, so earlier Stockfish was saying that um, well, it's giving this a negative evaluation, saying black is better, but also saying that knight takes e5 was the best move. Re I'm sorry, no, th these what is the best move sorts of things aren't a stockfish thing. This is Leechus parsing the engine's principal variation. Uh, I, I'm still... Unfortunately, I've been overwhelmed by technical issues for the last couple months and haven't been able to look into this just yet, but I need to look into this. This variation here does not necessarily represent best play. It just represents this is the variation that Stockfish was looking at um, a second or two before it spit out this number here of plus 10, or number here of plus 7, or what have you. Um, principal variation just means what am I currently searching at, not what is best play. HS sucks. So yeah, but what was happening earlier is that we had a plus 7.9 and then we had like a minus 1 evaluation here. And now that I switched how analysis is done, uh, instead of being distributed across multiple Stockfish instances, it's all done by the same instance. We get a saner evaluation that doesn't spike all the way below zero and back. Uh, but, I mean, obvious questions are still raised, and like, are any of these evaluations correct? And is it right to say that um, whatever happened here was the move all by itself that decided the game? Would it be fair to say that this was even until... Um, black played bishop takes c5. I don't know. Uh, we could take a look at what the computer was looking at here when it was thinking that this might be equal. Uh, and draw our own conclusions, but 
more telling would be um, to try this same game um, and see what evaluation numbers come out with uh, Chief's changes. And if his changes generate different numbers, you can compare the two and see which one seems more accurate. And um, is it is there some way to tune or change my code or the code that this that generates this graph to make it more accurate? Um, I'm just concerned about overfitting. Um, let me see if I can find a good description of overfitting. Uh, machines, machine learning and statistics. It occurs when a statistical model describes random error or noise instead of the underlying relationship. Now, um, that's not to say that uh, the model is entirely flawed, but it's just to say that some parts of a model could be flawed, um, and I just want to be careful not to change the engine in a way where it's difficult to detect uh, what's... Uh, it's difficult to figure out why some positions evaluate far differently than others. One thing that can be said, I guess, about the particular evaluation models here is that at least they're kind of consistent in how they evaluate positions. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I even draw that conclusion here, but... Um, like, you don't see this graph spiking all over the place when certain moves are made. That this is a pretty smooth graph overall. It could be made even smoother, but... Um, through many, many iterations, where this used to spike all up and down and up and down, I've rather, I managed to smooth out the evaluation function quite a bit. Um, which, incidentally, has helped the search tremendously and made it a lot more competitive. Now, Chief made some changes to improve um, the AI a lot further, um, but I just need to make sure that we still are going to embrace all the ideas, at least, uh, yeah, I think we're going to embrace all the ideas that are mentioned in his comments here. Um, so... Let me scroll down. I mean, yeah, here he's describing more as like process that he went through um, to do the development, and the fact that he's encountered all these assertions and things. But his process, uh, let's see. Okay, so he says more later, but this more later really referred to his process and assertions and things that he encountered, whereas this comment up here actually sums up the changes in detail. Um, so I think each one of these things I want to accept. Um, like we want to have correct evaluation of piece values. One thing Stockfish does is it judges piece imbalances pretty well and notes how combinations of pieces um, generate certain balance or bonuses. Like a bishop pair will have a bonus, bishop and knight will have a different bonus, two knights and two bishops has a different bonus, and like Stockfish does all these kinds of covariant um, modeling and evaluation. So this kind of change is a lot more complicated than it sounds, but um, I can take a look at what lines were changed regarding this and see like, is there a way that I can genericize that to better fit with the way that Stockfish models an evaluation of a position. Um, and yeah, there's square values added. I assume for pawns occupying squares or pieces attacking squares or something like that. Um, Yeah, so I've written a lot of code for newer versions of Stockfish. Um, the rest of this, like this evaluate thing based on it looks as if a player is unable to break through a pawn barrier. 
I think theoretically it would make more sense to do that not during a static evaluation but during a dynamic search and I think Chief agreed in his follow-on comment that it'd be interesting to see like if there's a way to do that during search rather than during this um, because this is a really hard problem to solve for static evaluation and meaning that if we solve this during static evaluation that our search function is going to be overly optimistic or overly pessimistic in some positions and not even bother searching which kind of defeats the point of doing searches but um, yeah I just need to make sure that while this idea is preserved about pieces breaking through a pawn barrier and being able to um, occupy lots of spaces uh, or being able to take a whole bunch of pawns in a row um, you need to ensure that that doesn't isn't somehow um, uh, overfit to the idea of oh well these pawns look like that they block these pieces as opposed to they actually do and in most cases, if the pawns look like they control space and the pieces can't get past them, it, most of the time that will be accurate, but sometimes um, that would create a vulnerability, at least in the computer's search, where it'll fail to find piece breakthroughs and such. Um, that's, that, that's why I'm kind of pushing to doing that during a search instead of doing that during a static evaluation. Um, but my point is that like I, I think all these things are good ideas and especially because these have been reviewed not just by chief but also with a strong horde player like they know what they're looking for um, I'm, I'm not guaranteeing that all things here of our equal importance like if we find that there's some way to accurately calculate things quickly maybe some of these things do go by the wayside and the calculation just completely takes over if we improve the search function in some way um, I don't know uh, this here yeah you're right that this was this is my initial attempt this um, evaluation uh, for oh for black pawns uh, black doesn't care too much about his pawn structure well that's true but I don't think that that greatly changes our evaluation anyhow maybe I'm mistaken I, I'd have to take a look at the specifics of some positions and how that plays out but I wouldn't think that our pawn structure is really something heavily changing the evaluation and even if it does change the evaluation wouldn't that be a favorable thing like if all blacks pawns are doubled or tripled or quadrupled I don't know how that would even happen but say if black instead of having eight pawns on the seventh rank had doubled pawns on the A, C, E, and G files um, Hmm. Actually, yeah, the more I think about it, that's not so much of an issue in this variant. Because doubled pawns, while they do heavily impede black's pieces and make it really difficult for black to develop, maybe development's not so important. Um. um. Well, okay, so you keep building with the make file, and the executable generates, but executable, I guess when you're saying you go to run it, it freezes. Or execute it, it freezes. Um, I have seen cases where uh, the executable, you, you're talking about it won't even start up. Like if you type in just UCI as command number one, you don't get any feedback back. Like I have seen executable fail to return in some really weird funky positions um, one of those hilarious was a pretty funny position if I may share it uh, I was playing a game with Zug Addict do I still have this here? where'd it go? 
Okay, let me look up Zug's username here. We played an interesting position. Yeah, let's pick this one out. Uh, where's our games? Here we are. Yeah, this kind of position, this would also cause um, Stockfish to freeze up and not return. And I've been trying to figure that one out. Like, I mean, this is just a normal chess position. I told it search with depth of zero with a search time that was a really low search time. And even with a minimum search parameters, it would not return in a reasonable time frame. I don't think it returned at all, but maybe I just didn't leave the program running long enough. But somehow, Stockfish does struggle with some positions more than others. Um, but I'm kind of surprised to hear that you don't get any input or output from or to the program. Um, so offhand, I don't know why that would be, but like I said, I also need to get through these assertion issues and get you a good version of the code that you can test with. Or that I can test with. Um, what's the socket address? I mean, that's the DNS name right there. That's You can put that into a web browser. That'll resolve through dynamic DNS and so forth. What's the socket address of... Oh, okay, yeah, no, that's that's right. Yeah, just substitute in place of leechess.org, substitute um, this uh, this domain here that you typed in. Um, yes, yeah, that's correct. Oh, well, yeah, minus the typo. Um, yeah, basically just take the leechess.org and substitute my domain name. And um, you'll be able to connect through WebSockets and such. Oh, that's cool. Okay, now I see what you're doing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, feel free to do that. Um, and uh, especially if that accelerates your testing in some way. One thing I really need to work on is getting this Leechess TV uh, working on my domain. This did work earlier. I'm surprised it's not working. Um, uh, but also I need to get through these assertion things and figure out what's going on here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now I get that there's no Chess Insights database. My log file's telling me that. But, um, yeah, I think I do want to accept all the ideas that were in that pull request. I'm just not sure about the actual implementation of those ideas. Um, yeah, absolutely. I was looking for feedback as to what to improve to make it work better. And that's also kind of why I exposed this instance publicly so that people can test out things and point out positions and games and whatever where this AI performs less or performs poorly. Um, so that said, I'm going to keep digging into this Leechess TV page and try to figure out why I'm getting a 404 instead of getting the appropriate TV page. Uh, there's got to be an explanation for it. Uh, let's see, where am I here? Okay. So there's my routes file. Oh. Before I go too far, let me take a look at what I've changed. I don't think I changed anything related to the TV. Uh, oops. Let's 
So I'm just taking a look at all my local leeches changes. Okay. Yeah, that's... I certainly did not change how leeches TV works. Now let me take a look and see, like, maybe there was some recent commit that was done by Ornicar to address this TV issue? I don't know. Let me see what recent commits were done. Okay, so within the last day, nothing's been done to change Leech Us TV. Um, yeah, and I do need to get that TV view working so we have something meaningful to look at here. Um, I fully intended just to put on Leech Us TV and commentate as people are playing games, but no such luck. So I have to figure out what the heck's going on. Um, What's my TV URL? It's just uh, it's just the domain name plus TV. No, it's the subdomain. It's en dot domain name uh, slash TV. This results in a four hundred four. Uh, okay. So what scale of files contain this 404? There's app global.scala. And there's a whole bunch of compiled scale of files. Let's take a look at app global.scala. Um, okay. So apparently grep is not going to tell me very much. I actually have to open up the file. On handler not found. Um, then generate a not found object. Um, okay. That basically just says that I have to take a look at how code gets sent to this, or how an event gets propagated to on handler not found. But I'm guessing there's probably something pretty obvious and damning here somehow. Yeah, I have to understand inside the play framework how does this 404 get generated. Oh, hang on. Failed to connect because 101 was expected instead of 200. Um, okay, let me take a look at what HTTP 101 is. It should be status code of 101. Switching protocols. This means the requester has asked the server to switch protocols, and the server is acknowledging that it will do so. Yes, yeah, so I guess 101 means that you're trying to use a WebSocket URL from a context which is... Yeah. Oh, ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, that's it. Alright. Cool. 
Glad to see that. At least you get the socket connections going there. I mean, yeah, that does give me some 